Hey guys, welcome back to Cheat Code Jiu Jitsu. Jeff here again. I want to deviate a little bit from what we've been doing lately uh, with side control submissions. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about injury prevention. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about the LCL. The reason that I want to talk about this is I've, I've had a few friends injure their LCLs lately and uh, something that we can all avoid if we actually have a uh, good technique. The LCL is a weird ligament in the knee. Most other knee injuries that you can get if you injure your knee, it's usually as a result of some sort of an accident or maybe you landed wrong or something like that or possibly a training partner applied a move a little bit too hard. The LCL is different though because most of the time when you injure your LCL, it's actually kind of your fault because you usually were, you were moving with poor body mechanics. And so if we can learn to switch up a little bit about how we move, pay a little bit more attention to the LCL and not put as much pressure on it as we do sometimes, then we can avoid injury, stay on the mat for longer. So what I'm gonna talk about here in this video is I'm gonna talk about what the LCL is, the mechanics of how it moves and what you can do to put unnecessary pressure on it and injure it. I'm gonna go over a few positions that are common places where the LCL can get damaged if you don't move properly. And then make sure to watch to the end of the video because I'm also gonna talk about, uh, specifically with triangle choke variations, how proper body mechanics can not only help save your LCL, but can also make your triangle chokes that much tighter. Also, if you're somebody who does not normally watch or read the descriptions of the videos, please make sure to look down in the description of this video and we'll put a lot of helpful links to other videos talking about how to avoid LCL injuries and just some other helpful things to people that we talk about in this video. So first and foremost, what is the LCL? In your knee, you have a whole bunch of ligaments. There's the ACL, the MCL, the PCL. They're located in all different spots around here. Specifically, the LCL is the ligament that runs down the outside of your knee. So on the right side of my right knee, left side of my left knee. The way that this gets damaged with most of the general public is usually some kind of high impact to the inside of the knee. It pushes this out, puts tension on the LCL. As grapplers, that's not usually what happens to us. Normally the mechanism that loads up the LCL for us and causes injury is we get some kind of significant tension on the outside of the ankle or the foot pushing in while at the same time we have some kind of tension from the inside of the knee pushing out. That motion right there will load up the LCL and put a lot of pressure on it. The LCL is a very thin ligament, it's not that big, and when you load it up like that there's a very good chance you could get some kind of a tear. Now the good news is if you injure your LCL as long as it's not a full thickness tear, it usually will resolve without surgery so you don't necessarily have to get cut open. The problem is you're going to be limping for a little while, you might well be off the mats, it can take up to three months for a partial tear to heal, so it's definitely something that you want to avoid. You don't want to get involved in that. Uh, if you want some better discussion on it, I'm going to link in the description down below to a video from Lachlan Giles. If you don't follow him, you really should. Uh, for those of you who don't know Lachlan, he is the guy that gave Craig Jones his black belt. He is a black belt. He's the head instructor at Absolute MMA St. Kilda down in Australia. Put a link to his video. He's an excellent resource on this, not only because he's a fantastic grappler, but he's also a PhD uh, physiotherapist, so and specifically with knee injuries. So he's got a lot of good material on this. So let's talk about a couple of positions, three different positions in particular, where LCL injuries can become common with bad movements and how we can clean those up a little bit to avoid injuring the LCL in the first place. One of the most common that you probably figured out from this type of motion is rubber guard. So if I get in here, Jared, I'm gonna give you an example first of bad rubber guard, okay? If I'm here straight on with Jared, flat back on the mat, and then I pull this leg up, and I grab a hold of my foot and pull to bring it up like this. I personally am somebody who's really flexible. I have a lot of dexterity in my hips and a fair bit of flexibility in my knees. I can pull this off. 
If you're not really that flexible in your legs, when you reach down here and you grab this foot and you start pulling this foot up to get it into this rubber guard position, especially if you're flaring your knee out, that's where that tension comes in on the LCL. You really want to avoid doing that because that's really bad for your knee. How do you clean that up? Cleaning it up is simple. Don't do rubber guard flat on your back. This is not an optimal position for doing rubber guard. Slide to the side. When I get here, Demir, can you come around here, please? When I get here on my side, this leg is much more mobile and much more active. If I want to get myself into rubber guard at this point, there's, that's correction number one, is to get up on your side and do it from here. Here's number two, and this is kind of the secret that not as many people know as probably should. Credit to Brandon McCaffrin. Uh, he was the, I caught this from his Meat Hook DVD, which is fantastic. Buy it if you don't have it. No, he's not paying me to say that. But people grab their foot some way with one hand, and then they try to bring it up. Do you see how that's flaring my knee out? I don't want to do that because, again, that's putting pressure on my LCL, and that's not what I want to happen. Instead, take this knee, bring the knee up first. When you bring the knee high, this is much easier to get this foot over in place and either go mission control or meat hook. And now I'm pulling my knee forward rather than flaring it back. So I'm doing rubber guard with less flexibility required, but also keeping the pressure off of my LCL so I preserve my knees. Okay, so that little adjustment, get to the hips, bring the knee up first, and then bring the foot over into rubber guard, avoids the potential knee damage and allows you to do rubber guard with less flexibility. Another common position is a 10th planet position called the truck. I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video that Brandon McCaffrey actually did today, posted on his Instagram account where he was talking about this exact thing. But when we get into the truck position, we'll turn. there's a lot of ways to get in there. This is not a truck entry video by any stretch of the imagination. But when I step back like this, keep your leg down, then I come here. Do you see this twist right here in my leg? Where's Jared's leg? It's right up here at my ankle, right up here at my foot. If I just leave this, my right leg, my outside leg dangling, and I don't do anything with it, if Jared straightens his leg out and pushes pressure back into me this way, what's he doing? He's torquing the outside of my ankle back towards my body. If I'm doing that at the same time that I'm really crunching and flaring that knee out, I could end up with a knee injury. Right there, figure four, behind the knee. It reinforces it. Now when Jared pushes back into me, he doesn't really have as much room to push back. Kind of protects my knee. I can stack. I can do a couple other things in here. But now I've got reinforcement on the inside of my ankle to keep it from being pushed in. Preserves my knee, makes things a lot better for me. Third position, very, very common. Butterfly guard. I know this because I have now twice injured the LCL in my left leg because I got sloppy doing butterfly guard, specifically doing butterfly guard into a move called the ham sandwich. Uh, this is not gonna be an instructional on how to do the ham sandwich. Leave a comment if you wanna see that down the road. I'm happy to do a video on that later on. But the essential gist of a ham sandwich is I get in here and butterfly guard and yeah, leg up, this, on this, this knee up. I get in here into butterfly guard and I'm trying to elevate this knee up. So this foot comes off the ground, slide this underneath, grab the foot, bring it back in, and then figure four. There's sweeps, there's submissions, there's all kinds of fun stuff. But if I go to do this elevation, see how my knee is turned in at about a 45 degree angle right now? When I start to push, I'm gonna be pushing in the direction that my knee is. It's not physically possible for me to push this way. I have to push this way. If I go to elevate Jared's foot off the ground and he immediately puts weight right back down onto it, that's exactly the bad position that we don't want. I'm flaring my knee at this point. He's putting pressure down on the outside of my ankle. 
two different times I got lazy with this and I popped the LCL on my left leg. That's why I'm showing you guys this with my right leg because I can't do it right now with my left because I popped the LCL about two months ago and it still hasn't fully healed. So make sure in butterfly, if you want to elevate somebody, point your knee to the sky. I can elevate here as much as I want. No pressure on the LCL, everything's fine. If I elevate good, maybe I get him over. If he shifts his body weight back over, he's just gonna sit on my hook and bring it back down. I don't get the sweep, but I also don't pop my knee. Okay, so that's a really important way to protect your LCL. Big key to protecting your LCL is hip rotation. Specifically, internal and external rotation of the hip. This is what's going to really save you in protecting your LCL. I do a, a warm up. I stretch for about 15 to 20 minutes almost every time before I roll. And one of the things that I do as a part of my warm ups is I just do this. I lay back and I just move my foot from side to side. Point the toes, twist it, pull the toes back, twist. I can't tell you how many people have asked me, what in the world are you doing? And are you hurt somehow? I'm not injured. This is hip rotation. Move the heel, not the toes. I'm not trying to take my toes and point them out and point them in. I'm trying to move my heel left and right, left and right. I also do it straight up and down, exact same movement. Notice my knee is not fully locked out, but I'm rotating my hip in and out. When I rotate my hip, I can change the angle of my knee and change the angle of where my force is gonna drive for different movements. That's how internal and external rotation, I can change what direction my butterfly pressure is gonna go. And more importantly, here's your bonus. That's also how I can change my triangle chokes to make my triangle chokes not only safer, but also more effective. So I'm gonna do two triangle chokes, one regular triangle, one an inverted triangle. I'm not gonna go over all the finishing mechanics for the triangle right now. There is a section coming up on that that I'll be doing that in a little bit when we finish with the side mount submissions. But right now, I wanna talk about specifically where you can have things go wrong and where you can hurt your LCL doing a triangle. Straight on with Jared, got my triangle choke, I'm up. How many times have we gotten here? So you cross your feet, you push them straight down. Go ahead and break down. So I've got his posture broken down and I've got this foot that's around his neck straight down his back, right? It's a common position. What do people tell you to do? Reach up and grab your shin, bring your shin back over. Look at that motion. What have we been talking about? That motion right there of grabbing your shin, pulling it, is that internal rotation of your ankle as my knee flares out. That's not good for your LCL. It's a good way to pop it. You may not pop it every time you do that, but that's dangerous. You don't want to do that. Here's the better way to do it, and it's also way better for the triangle, okay? When I get Jared into this position, I always teach on triangle chokes. If you don't know what you're doing with your hands, both your hands go to the head, partially so that you can pull down on the head when it's time. Watch this difference in rotation. Rather than leaving this bent and then pulling this up to try to get it into the position that I need, instead put both hands on his head so he can't posture up. Straighten, rotate, and now collapse. Rather than using whatever muscles it is that rotates my hip, now, I'm using those just to get my hip into the right position and then I'm doing a hamstring curl to bring my leg down in front of Jared's shoulder in exactly the right position for a triangle choke. Now this thing's on tight, I can go ahead and finish. The other thing about this that makes it really lethal for triangle chokes is what's cutting into his carotid artery over here is these little sharp tendons down here at the bottom of my hamstring. 
if I leave this here and I leave my leg laying and I try to pull it to the side, there's no hamstring activation. I'm not pulling my hamstring in. These tendons don't get really sharp. By turning this up, turning my heel in, and then pulling down, I'm activating my hamstrings. It makes these really tight, right up against his neck, exactly where they need to go, and gets me into a much better position to finish that triangle. So it's both safer and gets you a far more effective triangle choke. Last one, the inverted triangle. This is one of my personal favorites. As a short guy with short legs, triangles have been difficult for me for a long time, but this is one that I can get into really effectively during back takes. All right, Jerry, if I can have you back. So specifically, there's different ways that I'll enter where I'll end up with a Kimura grip on this side. And then my fight becomes here with this leg. I'm trying to get it inside of his arms, right? Now what I was taught originally to do this inverted triangle is I want to get this here, put this leg on his belly or on his chest or wherever it is, and then reach down, grab my ankle, and pull this up. Once again, there's that bad rotation that we've been talking about, grabbing your ankle, pulling it up, my knee is flared out. If you don't have good hip rotation in the beginning, you're not going to be able to do this, and it generally leads to a much looser triangle choke. Because my legs are so short, I'm sure this isn't great for Jared, but he's gonna survive this, because it's not really on. And I can only kind of get my foot to about right here on his chest. That's not an effective triangle choke. And because I'm doing that pulling motion on the bottom of my foot while my knee is flared out, it's dangerous for me. So rather than doing that, what I want to do instead, get this inside, get your toes inside of his elbow. Plant your foot on his hip if you have to. Wrench up on the Kimura. See how his elbow comes up? And lay back. You see the space that I'm creating? This is what I want. I'm leaving a giant hole for my foot to go into. Now watch, I don't reach down and grab my foot and pull it up. There's no hamstring activation and it's dangerous for my LCL. Instead, extend, pin down his arm, rotate, and then cut back. Hamstring activation, foot's in the right spot, I barely have to do anything and he's already ready to tap out. It gets you a super tight triangle choke, inverted triangle choke, and it's far safer. You take care of your LCL, fewer knee problems down the road. So keep those in mind, keep yourself safe. If you like the video, please drop a like in the bottom. It really does help me out a lot. It helps people to find my channel and keep watching my stuff. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell at the bottom so you get notification anytime I upload a new video. Stay safe, take care of your knees. See you guys next time.